really a podium kind of person, so I'm just going to kind of run around while we talk about this. Um, this is not really a seroptimus. What we're talking about are not specifically seroptimus, but what do we do as seroptimus? We have fundraisers. We look for, um, we do projects, our drink projects. We try to recruit new members, and a part of that requires us uh, social media, it requires flyers, it requires all these different things. So what I'm hoping I can share with you today are some tools that might make that simpler for your clubs. So the reason there's a picture of a cat here, um, in college we had somebody come in for a weekend seminar um, about rendering, 3D drawing. I had a an interior designer before I went to retail. He had a really thick Asian accent and he kept saying, you are fast, you go to movies. You are fast, you go on a hot date. And he kept saying like, work quickly, and then you can go spend time doing the things that you want to do. And it wasn't about the quality of work being less. It was about if we're good at what we do, and we're efficient, we get what the work done, and we have a better balance in life. So if I got my work done, I want to sit on my sofa with my cat. So that is my free time. That's what I'm trying to get to for my balance. So that's explanation of the cat opener. So what are we going to talk about? I want to introduce some useful tools to you guys. I'm going to share um, how they can be used within our club. This is not a tutorial. Please do not take notes. Do not leave here thinking I'm going to teach you how to do this. I'm going to tell you what they have the capability to do, and then you decide if that's something your club can use. And if you need more direction and how to use those, I'm happy. I do this all day in my business. I'm happy to give you a little bit more direction. But this is really just for you to listen and say, my gosh, that would save me so much time. Um, like I said, I'm not telling you to go do these. Seroptimus is not telling you to use these. These are just access to some things that you can think about and hopefully help you out. I don't know why I'm pointing at that. That has no uh... <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to talk about Eventbrite, Instagram, and Canva. I'm not going to talk much about Eventbrite. There's not much to it, to be honest. Um, it's just a really helpful tool. So what is it? It's a website. You go in when you have events. You put your information in. It's online for people to help find your event. Um, is it hard? If you know a location, a time, a description of your event, then you can use this. If you don't know that, you shouldn't be having an event. So, <laughs> um, what do we use it for? We can use this for meet and greets. We can use this for fundraisers. We can use this um, for our dream programs for people to sign up. Um, that really, I, the sky's the limit. It is a free website. There are paid options like anything. I've never actually used those, but you can use it to, for marketing. Um, another great thing, if you've been looking for a way to sell tickets online to events, you can do that for Eventbrite. Um, we've done that for our brunches in the past. So look at that if you've been trying to figure out how to sell online tickets. Still doing, still thinking that's great. Okay, so if you went to um, the website, it's going to look kind of like this. It's showing me events in Tuscaloosa. That's where I was when I pulled this up. What I want you to pay attention to down here, it says for you, online, today. That's what people, if they want to search for something, maybe they're looking for a free event. They can go search free events. If they're looking for a charity or cause, enter our fundraisers. Um, they can search for things through there, and that's how they're going to find your event. So I have a silhouette artist who comes to my store twice a year. He does all of his tickets through Eventbrite. So this was an event that we had. Again, there's a location, there's contact information, date and time, description. If you want to purchase tickets, you can click on that red box. So if you were to scroll down, you can put in images. And then this is what we want to look at, the tags down here. This is how people are also going to find that event. If you're looking for a family-friendly event, it's going to show them this event. If they're looking for things in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, it's going to show them this event. So it will give you some prompts and some things you can choose from for tags, but you can also just put in whatever you want to put in. That's really all I'm going to say. Eventbrite.com, look it up. Play with it. It's very simple. All right. Instagram is my love language. I know you people, I, who in here uses, y'all know I'm going to ask questions to make everybody stand up or sit down or raise a hand. Who in here uses Facebook? Raise your hand. Who in here uses Instagram? Okay. 
So if you use Facebook and not Instagram, somebody real quick. I'm gonna get help with my really good. This is Bella. If um, <laughs> um, if you use Facebook but not Instagram, and will tell us why. Because I, I, I'm pretty loud. Yeah. Okay. Right so I signed up for Instagram for for myself, yeah. and I, I really just don't know how to use it. Perfect. I'm going to teach you what you need to know. I like um, If you use Instagram and Facebook and you prefer Instagram, raise your hand. Why do you prefer Instagram? I passively use Facebook. So what I've learned about Instagram is whatever I put on Instagram, I can share it to Facebook automatically. And I prefer Instagram because my kids told me Mom, old people use Facebook, <laughs> and I want to be young. We're going to keep moving because I don't have a lot of time, but I just kind of want to see some feedback. So what is Instagram? Instagram is the sister to Facebook. Um, is it hard? In my humble opinion, it's much easier than Facebook. What's hard for people who have Facebook who don't understand Instagram, it is presented to you very different, but the options for Instagram are much more streamlined. It just looks very different, so it's intimidating. Um, I think it's much simpler to use than Facebook. How much is it? Like Facebook, it's free. There are obviously paid um, options to boost to promote things just like Facebook. Uh, what do we use it for? Same thing we do for Facebook to get um, to share events, to share pictures of our members, um, how information is presented through Instagram, the biggest difference to me is it's much more visual and less words and content. So we've always heard a picture's worth a thousand words, right? We've all heard that. So Instagram is geared much more toward just images. So it really helps kind of capture a feel or an emotion or like a vibe, like you're looking at images, you're getting a feeling from those. It has higher engagement from users. Now, Facebook has more people who are users, but of the people who have Instagram, it's got a much higher um, engagement. I see this every day in my business. I have double the number of followers in Facebook, but on Instagram, I have significant, like most of my business comes from the Instagram side. Almost never does anybody like or share or post or comment on my Facebook. I get it every day from Instagram. And like she said, whenever I post on Instagram, it goes straight to my Facebook. So it's the exact same information, but I get much more results from Instagram. Part of that is because it's visual. People don't get overwhelmed with all the dialogue that you see, shared articles, shared recipes. So people can see, uh, go through it, and they don't get bogged down with so much information. And so it's more user-friendly from that standpoint. Most of the users are under 35 years old. So we're saying, we don't know how to reach younger members. We're trying to get younger members. Well, maybe we're not looking where they're at because they're probably not on Facebook. I have Facebook. I look at it maybe twice a year. I just don't go there. Um, but I do look at my Instagram. So you may not be looking in the right places to find those potential new younger members. I'm not really sure about that. Um, I don't really see that. I don't see many people saying that. I, I don't know what you're talking about when you say, like, my Facebook's been hacked. You know, I don't really see that as much, but it's still meta. It's the same company. So I, I honestly still don't know. It's not as often. Yeah, it's not quite as often, probably. And some of that might be, too, because, like, on Facebook, you can do fundraisers or you can, you're linked to so many things. Whereas Instagram, it's just set up a little different. Like, we'll see. There's probably not a big advantage of hacking somebody's Instagram. Um, in my opinion, opinion, it's simple and easier to post. Like we said, the asterisk is to remind you that if you're connected, your Instagram and your Facebook are connected, whatever you post on Instagram will automatically go to your Facebook as well. And I just learned this is new. It will do that also from Facebook to Instagram. Um, it doesn't translate as well that way. We'll talk about that later. Um, and that's just in your settings. I use it mostly for um, posting pictures on our webpage. Mm -hmm. So I post a picture and I store it and it appears on my webpage. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have, we have a, a thing we 
embedded in your web page to show. And who, who gets your Instagram posts? Do you have to put people into your? It's just like Facebook. People follow your account, and then they see it. Um, and it's just an instant visual of, of who and what you are. And I'll show you what Instagram looks like when you when you scroll through it. But because it's all pictures, you're gonna you should someone should immediately know what you're about without the words. You should be conveying who and what you are as a club visually. And I always want to make sure I tell people, I'm not telling you don't use Facebook. It's got its great applications. If somebody wants to find a form or you want to have a link to something, that's great. Um, but you're going to re reach a different set of people who are more likely to engage with you consistently through Instagram. They're just different. So this is a nonprofit Instagram feed. At the top, we have details. I'll show you that in a minute. But when you look at this, do you have an idea what they're probably about? Children. You see children. You mm -hmm. see your guessing education. We see people writing. We see reading. We see them in groups. We see them in uniforms. So we have a pretty good idea. We see what looks like maybe races and they're fundraising. They're probably a nonprofit. So we get a pretty good idea of what they're about, correct? And you kind of scroll through. That's why I'm saying it's an instant snapshot to tell people who you are. So at the top of there, this is what they are. They're a global organization bringing quality education to kids around the world. Let's make an impact together. So any, what they say that they are is very well represented in their pictures. My mother-in-law said I can use this. She's actually the president of this organization, and she said she's not involved in the social media, so she said I can use it as a not ideal example, so I'm going to. We look at this, and we kind of know it's probably geared toward kids, right, because the colors are really bright. Do we know what this is? You have to really read those, right? And on your phone, those are small. You have to really, like, dig to see what this is. This is the Children's Hands-On Museum in Tuscaloosa. You can go in with your kids. You have memberships. Um, you can play in all these stations. It's very neat. You can't tell that from looking at that. Did you tell your mother-in-law that? Oh, she knows. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this one on the right, very similar concept. It's called Art Garage for kids to go in and do art. They have like recycled materials. They do have some classes. Um, it's a membership. It's kind of similar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, am I still like, yeah, sorry, I don't know. So this one on the right is a very similar type business. They're on the street, maybe a mile apart. I'm a mom, and if I'm trying to figure out where to take my children to kill some time, and these are my two options, what do you think I'm going to pick? Right. Okay. Because what? I see it's for kids. I can see inside their space. I kind of have an idea what it's going to look like. I see faces of people that I'll probably see. I kind of, again, like there's some familiar, familiarity. What? <laughs> that one didn't come out quite right. But, um, you can see that they do events, but you kind of get the impression you can just go to this location. Over here, I don't see one child. I don't see the inside of space, which is like a three-story museum. And I kind of get the impression I have to go to an event. I can't tell that I can just walk in there and play. So very similar businesses very represented very differently. One I felt does it well and one does not. So I'm not even sure what the club this is, so I was just trying to find some throughout to his websites or uh, Instagram feeds. So again, this one you have to really dig and look. This is why I was saying when you do stuff on Facebook and it sends to your Instagram, it doesn't translate quite as well because this looks like they use images that were probably their Facebook header and they transfer it over and you can't even read the words. But what I'm going to, the good news is in a minute, I'm going to show you how you can really revamp this and fix it pretty quickly using a different tool. So we're just going to leave the anatomy of Instagram real quick. So at the top, you're going to have your profile, your information. When I did this last time for the district meeting, we were in Huntsville. I think they do a really good job on their page, so that's why I use them. Uh, your profile, simple, sweet, what you are. Travel guide to Huntsville, Alabama. Rocket City. Uh, our visitor center is open and ready to welcome you. Very friendly, not salesy. Just in a nutshell, what we are. 
So that would be at the top. So next is kind of the feed where all the pictures live. Again, we're just going to try to portray who we are with some pictures. So I'm thinking, gosh, Principal has some beautiful views nearby. They like to have some interesting places to go. Maybe I'm looking to relocate and I have a small family. And I'm like, wow, they have some beautiful outdoor spaces. This is like, fits our lifestyle. Um, they probably have some boutique restaurants and not just all chains. Um, congrats, Huntsville's number one. What now? I need to know they're number one at. I'm like intrigued to go in to learn more about Huntsville. So if I were to click on the picture, here's where I'm going to see the dialogue and information. We're on Facebook, it's kind of mixed all in. And it gets overwhelming to people like me. But if I click on this, this is where I go. And typically you don't see really, really wordy descriptions through Instagram. Sometimes they're more, but that's why I think this is simple, sweet, less is more. You're really just trying to pull people in. So if we go back, just like, does anybody look at the stories on Facebook? How they expire after 24 hours? Instagram is the same thing. They have a 24 hour shelf life, which means whereas your feed, you want to have really good pictures. Your story, it really doesn't matter. It could be blurry. It could really be, um, it's just good for storytelling and behind the scenes because it goes away. But the thing about posting on stories really consistently is it puts your club in front of people frequently. Just, it doesn't have to be salesy. It could just be a picture of your club at a meeting. Love getting together with these women once a month, something like that. So if I were to click on so if I were to click on this that says outdoors right here, those are highlights. So I'm oh, sorry, never mind, I'm skipping ahead. So if I were to watch their story, this one was actually a video of them walking into this pastry shop and it really made me want to go. So it was just a quick video. No dialogue, really nothing. It was just short and simple. So it's a 24-hour shelf life, but it's a great tool for telling a story. So maybe you've got a new fundraiser coming up. You take a picture, or go use a little picture, to be honest, it doesn't really matter, of y'all at a meeting and just put your story, because you can just add text over it. So excited to tell you about that. Are so excited planning a brand new fundraiser. Can't wait to tell you more soon. So I put then maybe two weeks later, um, Caroline Williams, our president, and I go to a venue, have a meeting. Maybe we're going to take a picture with us and the manager of that restaurant over out front of the venue. Uh, things are really coming together. Um, we're ironing out the details. Be looking for our event held at Tiger Restaurant. And so on. The night before, maybe you take a picture of everybody prepping, doing floral arrangements. Um, we're hard at work, getting ready. Can't wait to reach out tomorrow at our such and such event. There's still a handful of tickets online, whatever you want to put. So then at the end, you can, you can make a highlight, and you're going to put all those in that highlight. So people can kind of go back and follow that progress along the way. So for Huntsville, you're kind of highlighting things that are important, right, that you want people to still have access to. So outdoors, obviously, is probably a big selling point for Huntsville. They really want people to know they have great outdoor spaces and events. So if you were to click on this outdoors, this would be the first story that they posted a while back. A little bit of a little bit of words, nothing major. And you keep clicking through just like you on Facebook. And you're just gonna see all these stories that highlight outdoor locations, events that are outdoors, parks, anything that's a selling point for them. So some ideas for highlights of things that you would want to live permanently, which you can always go back and take them off. But some things that you might want to highlight and focus on for Sorofton's might be just about your club, maybe a little bit of history. Maybe you want to highlight your members. Maybe you want to highlight dream programs, have their own highlight. Behind the scenes, prepping, maybe um, at some of the dream events. Maybe uh, if you have a luncheon where you present your Live Your Dream Board, <clears throat> some of those images would live there. Events, sponsors, this is one I feel like we should all probably do because we ask for money for events, and then we don't talk to those people for another year. Unfortunately, that's a lot of times how that happens. So what I'm saying to do, if you've got Instagram and Facebook, follow the businesses that are sponsoring your events and share what they're doing all year long. If it's a restaurant that's running 
Cinco de Mayo party, share it and say our partners at La Bamba are having a killer special for Cinco de Mayo. Make sure to stop by and check them out. Just give them shout outs because they're going to see when you tag them. And so the next year when you come back to ask for money, they're more likely to do it and they're going to be more invested because you're also helping build their business year round. It's a lot easier to ask for money when you feel like you've given back as well. <clears throat> so goals, posting goals. Consistency. Um, consistency is really like anything the key. But so set a small goal that's really attainable that you feel like you can do. Um, don't shoot for the moon. Make something small. And as you get into events, or as you get closer to an event, you might want to post more frequently leading up to that. So don't overwhelm yourself with content, but just know that you need to set a realistic goal and stick to it. As you get, as you get better at it, it may be easier and you might can, um, ramp that up. So try to post maybe one to three times on your feed a week. I think once a week is very doable. That's four posts in a whole month. Um, three might feel like a stretch, but I'm going to show you how you can get there pretty quickly. And then on your stories, you really want to post as much as possible. Um, but I'm going to show you some quick ways to create this content. So who here thinks you could post once a week for your, for your club? Four times a week, uh, four times in a month. We think we can make one picture a week. Okay. So maybe this is your first picture. Uh, Star Optimist women are always hard at work, helping women and girls in our community. Look at three of our veteran members doing what they do best, whatever you want to comment. So next, we're just going to put something kind of fun and lighthearted, just to quote. Tuesdays are better with tacos, but the caption is probably going to be, maybe it's a reminder, don't forget we have a meet and greet um, this Tuesday at the local La Bamba restaurant. Join us for chips and appetizers and Dutch treat margaritas, something like that. So this one, we're going to pretend that this is me as a business and not a member. So this one we can share. We're so excited for Casey with Confetti Gift and Party and her brand new location. Um, we've loved, she's been supporting us in our goals and we're so excited to support her in her new venture, something like that. So you're just giving a shout out to one of your um, past sponsors. So that's three pretty quick and really, we took an old picture. We used somebody else's information. We threw a cute little text in the middle. We did this today. We all looked at all these quotes. Sometimes you just need to throw a quote in there that's really on brand for Star Optimist and for your club. I do this a lot in my business, and it gets some of the highest um, likes and shares and things like that because I'm geared toward really busy women and moms. So I post a lot about coffee, about wine, about surviving children. Like, but people relate to that, and they – it's just on brand and it keeps them coming back. And it's just, it's not a salesy thing. It just makes them stop. And it's that they like with your club. So the next one, this is an old picture of our Live Your Dream Award winners. Throwback Thursday, we were just reflecting on these amazing women who were able to, um, to give an award. We got a recent update. You'll never believe what they're up to. Share, share an updated story about a past winner. And then just be the energy you want to attract. Again, short, sweet, nothing profound. We just threw a text in there. But instead of reaching people once, we've reached them three times and stayed on brand. Um, and we just want to keep our name in front of people in a positive way. That's another thing, too, with Instagram. People don't really feel like you're trying to sell or push stuff on them because it's mostly just images. You're not bombarding them with details or tickets or um, you're doing that, but you're doing it in a visual way that doesn't wear them out as much. So follow some accounts that have great um, quotes and things like this. This is um, an Instagram that I really love. It's got tons of quotes like this. So if you're going you're to follow them, you see one that you really like. I think this is a great one. So you're just going to go and hit that little um, paper airplane, and you're going to send it to your story. And it's going to look like this. And if this were on my Instagram, the little yes would be like, Bouncing up and down, and just say we couldn't agree more. This is a great quote. This is an old post where I was, I think I was driving to Huntsville. I was like road tripping, can't wait to reunite with my super optimist um, friends from other places, and I just threw it up on our story. 
So you're, we're not talking about you creating a lot of content. We're sharing a lot of things that are on brand, um, and we're just kind of giving back to our sponsors. There's a lot of ways to, to fill up our faith without having to read the wheel, having a thousand pictures. Um, there's just some hacks. So we're gonna, is anybody here uh, familiar with Canva? Okay, great. I'm going to tell you some ways. Yeah. Quick question. Okay. Instead of what you have to do for your account, when you make it to Facebook, will, your, will only what you post to Instagram go to Facebook, not stuff you received on Instagram for public use? Correct. It's what you post goes to both of your accounts. Okay. That's it. I have another question. Huh. I was fighting with Instagram when I was first trying to use it. Um, and I talked to a friend of mine who's a big social media person. She goes, well, you used your phone, right? I'm like, no, I use my computer. She goes, don't do that. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yes, Instagram is really, um, it's for your fun. Uh, you can look at it on the computer. I don't think you can post on your computer. It's, it's really meant to be more of a fun app. No, the old people knew that. <laughs> and it never occurred to me to do it on the computer. <laughs> Because when I do it, I'm like, oh, selfie, or like, here's a cute something on my phone, and I just post it. So I don't sit down, I'm not typing out anything long, long, so I don't really have a reason to do it on the computer, so it never occurred to me. So, great question. So, Canva, what is it? It's just a way to make graphics, uh, really design anything you want to do. Is it hard? It's as hard as you want to make it. It also can be really simple. When you, if you try it, do not get distracted by all the things. Keep it simple and build up. That's hard to do. It is hard to do. There's so much. There's so much on Canva. Um, how much is it? So it is, it is free. It's a website and an app, by the way. Um, there's a paid version. I highly recommend the paid version because there's some features that will just change your life if you have to make a lot of graphics. The great news is that you can apply as a nonprofit and get the paid version for free. It's just you answer some questions like one tax document and blah blah you're in. So um, we use what do we use it for? Everything. I live on Canva. So you can create everything from the social media post to posters to banners, all kinds of things. Um, it helps you to create content really quickly. You already can do a lot of copying, changing some text. Um, it's great because also you can it, you set up your brand standards, so to say. It'll have your straw to in there. You don't have to type in a number. You don't have to guess if it's close. It will always be the same. It's in there. You're going to pick your colors and your fonts, um, and it will be consistent whenever you make new information. You can organize your projects. Um, you did your barbecue and blue jeans. You put all that information put together in a folder next year. You copy it and you just update if you want to change some colors, change a little bit, but it's still all, all there. Um, it's, I tend to like to work on mine on Canva. It's easier to me. Um, but then I will just pull it up on my phone and download the images to share if it's something I'm sharing that way. So here's just an example. You can make all kinds of printed things from bags to mugs. Um, some examples on the other side, all your graphics, Facebook covers, Facebook posts, Facebook event covers, Instagram posts, stories, all the kinds of things. And it's already going to have the dimensions on here. You don't have to know that. It's going to just you're gonna say what you want to make, and it's going to make it the right size. So here's what I was talking about, branding and being consistent. So we've got our blue in here. We've got our logo. We've got our white. We've got our header, our subheader, and our text. And it will just always be the same. It's right there. We don't have to, like, What's that font we use? Like, it just gives you a professional look if it's always consistent, and we want to, we want to make that as easy as possible. So we did a shop to stop human trafficking. So this was you can see up here on the left. They have thousands of templates for anything you want to template for. I picked this template I think for a Facebook cover. I took the background and just made it white. I thought it looked cleaner. And this was our Facebook cover. So if I went up to the top. Right here, it says resize. This is one of the paid paid features that you're going to get for free. So now I want this same look. I want the text, I want the words the same, I want the background to be the same. But now I need um, maybe a banner for sponsors, or maybe I need um, Instagram posts in the story. So I go up here and I just tell it what I'm going to make out of that, and it will automatically change that size. So I don't have to restart any of it. 
So here is a folder, I've put them all together. So I have everything from highlights to stories to posts, all of that. I may have to move some of those images around and fill out the space, but it really is all there. Most of the work is done for me. So talking about creating content quickly. This is an Instagram story size, it's just square. So maybe I've uploaded, we've got pictures from the last five years of the Star Optimist members already loaded. I just threw this one in here. I got the next one, throw another picture, will automatically make them all the right size. So now I have a lot of images that are already formatted to what I need. I also love that if you've put in logos from your sponsors in the past, they're always here. You don't have to ask them to resend it. You don't have to find out who they sent it to last year and email and import it to you. It will just live here because also we have the same sponsors year after year, hopefully. So it will all just live here and be simple. So we talked about we want to highlight our members, maybe. So this is a template that they already had. So I took her picture out. I changed it to one of our members. Here's a picture that was already in our in our member or in our Canva. So I just put Caroline's picture in there. And then I copied it and I slid the picture over. So now it's Caroline Williams. My face was cut off, so I had to do a different one. But you could make 30 member highlights in two minutes if you just have the pictures. It's just a lot of copying. So we resized that and now it's a story. So we're going to post this on our story. So maybe we, our club size, uh, the first week of each month, we're going to highlight a member. So Monday, I'm going to post Meet Your Long Williams. Stories can be really interactive, and this is a great way to make people stop and really look at what you're doing and also learn a little bit. People like a quiz, right? We like to know if we got the right answer. So we say, Caroline's favorite is to his project. Well, there are three listed here, so they might say, you know what, I've heard of two of those. I didn't realize that was for optimist. Or like, what is Buds and Blooms? Now they're kind of, we've introduced them to some projects in a fun way. And of course, Caroline's is all of the above. Mm -hmm. Same thing, copy it, change it. Which of the following is false? Just fun facts about Caroline. Um, her favorite Star Optimist memory. I made some of this up, so don't tell her, like, she's on the floor. <laughs> Caroline, I made it up, I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, we love chocolate cake. <laughs> um, I just made this up for presentation purposes. Um, man, you should let me just hang myself there. <laughs> so, again, we've just we've created a lot of interest, um, and we focused on a member. This week, I just put... Um, I love long walks on the beach. She's been a member for 12 years, whatever you want to say, just about her, because you want people to get to know your club, the people that are in it, because we're trying to get new members. Nobody likes to walk into a room and know what they know and try to try to belong, right? We like an introduction. We like to kind of know what to expect. So again, we just find, you can go on the internet and find 30 quotes in like two seconds. All you're going to do is copy all these and insert the straw to this blue plus another blue, just copy and paste and put 30 in a, in a Canva and just change the words. And that's a lot of content. So this is the same one we looked at earlier, the uh, pencils of promise. So I just kind of want to show you again, really good representation of them. You also see these that have this similar graphic repeated with people. So maybe that is, maybe they are people who work for the organization. Maybe they're success stories, but you look at one and when you scroll through, you're going to immediately see more of those and know where to find more about something that's interesting to you like that. Here's another account that I love. It's just a face. But these are actually videos, but it's going to be a picture and a quote, a picture and a quote, a picture and a quote. And here's one that we looked at earlier. So what I wanted to come back around and kind of show you is that, man, I'm so good. I think this is my last slide. Um, <laughs> What we could have done is just gone in Canva, resized some of these graphics for an event, and it would have fit, and it would have worked. So there's a form up here. Nobody's going to be able to read that form on Instagram. You can't download it. You can't print it. There's it's really no value being on here. But what you could do instead, a picture of a member holding this document, or really any document, doesn't really matter. Again, we're just going for a visual holding it, saying our applications for whatever are now available through our Facebook or our website, 
scroll to get a sneak peek. And on Instagram, you could put several pictures. This could be your second one so people can kind of see what it is. But when they go to your feed, they don't immediately see it. And if they had thrown in a few quotes and just pictures of faces, that would really change the look of that Instagram. Clear as mud, right? Yes. <laughs> and again, I don't expect you to go to make these things, but if you looked at and thought, wow, I could really make a lot of quotes to fill in, and that seems pretty easy, let me know. I'm happy to give you, there's probably like tutorials and YouTube videos on how to do some of this, but I'm happy to work with anybody to learn how that works. Do you have any questions? Any other questions?